Hey YouTube, it's Electric Adventures here uh, with another pickup. This one from a local um, seller that I ran into um, well, recently um, and I managed to haggle a few items off him so no postage with this one and it's a fairly large bulk lot. It didn't cost me very much money but it, um, um, some very nice items I think you'll agree. So first we have the hardware so this is the main one. I haven't cleaned it or anything like that. We have an original Commodore 64 beige. Now I'm not 100% sure of the model until I open it up because the registration sticker is missing. Here for the people who haven't seen it is the ports on the back. Now we do seem to have a um, resistor um, bridged connector on the tape connector. I'm not 100 sure what that does. Um, I'll have to look it up. Um, but we have the, the cartridge port, your RF out, your first port is. You've got your two. One's the, one's the serial connector port, the other one's the AV port. Um, not labelled very well. Obviously, the tape connector port, and I believe that's the serial printer port in a Commodore 64. Now, the keyboard, I mean, it is very dirty but the keyboard, the keys all travel very well and you know there, there's no wear on the actual um, key prints I'll probably completely disassemble this and give it a bath um, now it does work, it fires up, I've already tested it um, it gives a slightly darker picture than my uh, C64C uh, but it still does work which is good um, although I must admit when I plugged it in, I didn't do a um, you know test every key test. And also, with it, and this is more for completion completeness in the hardware collection. And we actually had two of the newer versions of this, but I've already got one. So it is the original 1541 hard drive. It weighs a ton. It weighs it weighs more than the system. So it's quite long too. Um, but other than being dusty, it's in quite good condition. Um, I'll show you around the back. So it's got a nice on off switch in the back. And the reason why it's so heavy is it has an inbuilt power supply. Which I didn't notice before, so that's great. It doesn't need its own power supply. Um, it's got the serial in and the serial out. Um, and uh, very nice. So I'll have to sit on the bottom of the stack. And, um, I don't have. No, he didn't have, because uh, he actually had two Commodore 64s and two of the newer drives as well, and he only had one serial cable. So um, I've already got a serial cable, so I left him with a serial cable because I can hook this up with my existing one. But if I want to have two drives hooked up at once, I'll have to get another serial cable at some stage. Um, and he's he had two computer power bricks, and he's given me the newer one. So that's a much better condition than the one I picked up the other day, not discolored at all. Um, and I haven't actually tried it with this power supply yet, I just used my existing one. Alright, now on to the other items. Now, he had a whole bunch of discs, and the agreement was he'd give me half of them, so I've got a random half of the discs. So, uh, that's still quite a few discs. So. I haven't really been through them or tried them yet, and I don't know which ones work. Um, I've gone through and I found a couple of um, coffee programs for a start there and put them on the top. But there's um, well, there's a Zork one labeled Zork one. I'd be interested in seeing how it works. There's a few kids games like Winnie the Pooh. We've got Zoids Warplay. Just having a look at a few random ones. Um, word Attack. Hmm. Some are at silent service, so there's a few interesting things there that I'll have to go through and, and sort out and see what we ended up with. Just pop that there. Now, the other part of the deal um, was a pile of software for the Amiga, Atari ST, and the Commodore 64 as well. So, these I don't know which one's which until we have a look at it. So, and they're all um, boxed. So the first one we have is Lemmings, and this one's for the Amiga. It has 
an inner box. And inside that we have a registration card and two discs. So that's complete. Just oh, it's not easy to do when you're in a hurry. Right, the next one. Next one is uh, for the Omega as well, and it's a sports pack. So we have Windsurfer Willy, Hot Shots, just Hot Shot, it's just Hot Shot. Grand Karting, Karting Grand Prix and 5th Gear. Let's have a look. So, some interesting looking games there. I quite like the look of that Karting Grand Prix. Um, and the box is in not too bad condition. A little bit of ding there. And we do have a bit of mould inside the box. And the disc. And pardon me haggling this guy down, he had no idea whether the games would work or not because he hadn't tested them and I said, well, you know, there's not a chance, you know, there is a chance that game, even games in perfectly good looking boxes aren't going to work. It just depends on the disc material. Now, next one is actually for the Commodore 64. And it's a pack and it's got Chase HQ, Ghostbusters 2, Batman and Operation Thunderbolt. A really awesome sounding pack, you could have some of these work. And it lists on the side that it's both disc and tape, so we may have a couple of chances here. So we have a slip case and in a white box. And it actually looks like we've ended up with some extra games in here. We have BMX Races. Um, what was this called? Uh, there's another one. This is Zap Mega Tape 6. Two complete scissors of Zaxxon and, and Mutants. And my right here on the other side. Um, action Biker Chiller 3D Breakout Santalus. Mystery game. Right now. Oh, a mystery game. There's actually a cassette labeled here. Might be Astro Pilot. There's a fair chance of that. Because that's the only one missing a label. And last but not least of the bonus games, we have Robin Hood. Now, inside the action pack, we have. Four cassettes. So we'll let those nice ones out. Now it's probably going to be, uh, as I'm packing this slip away, it's probably going to be a period of time before any play demos appear. Well, I get a chance to play demos, so there'll be a bit of gap in time between now and when this video is rendered. And I more than probably have to split it into parts because there'll be too many games to demo. Now the next one is actually for the IBM. There we go. It's Dragon's Lair Escape from Singer's Castle. I mean, I basically got these based on a photo, so you couldn't really tell which systems they were for. But that could be quite interesting. So it's a PC version of Dragon's Lair, and it looks. Oh wow, look how many discs we've got. What a massive mass of discs, and they look in very good condition. And the poster is still in there, the mentioned poster. There we go. Viewing pleasure. Look at that. That's awesome. That's. Barring keeping it in good condition for the game, worth framing. And there's a really good manual. And even some pamphlets. And, um, and product catalogs as well. So that's probably the best condition thing so far. So that one's for the PC. So I'll get my stats in order here. Next, uh, I better not make this too long, we have 
bush back. That's a bit more items in the sand. That might be a mystery game. Yeah, treasure hunt. Imagine a treasure hunt in a very exotic neighbourhood, the entire world. So that's for the Amiga. So black inner box. And we look complete, so we have um, fold out map, registration card, and a single disc. The only trouble is the big box Amiga games uh, take up a lot of room, so it's going to be interesting where I'm going to put all of these. So, Meg Pop. Next. Another Amiga one, we have Wolf Pack. Looks like an interesting um, sub attack game. And we have a suitably large manual. The history of the submarine, which is quite interesting. A lot of plastic, a lot of mould smell, and the disc. Next. Also for the Amiga, we have Moonshine Races. This brings a bell from somewhere. It wasn't on, on Metal Jesus Rocks. List he showed recently. I'm not sure I'll have to chip. So there we go, there's the back. Oh, it's upside down. And that looks pretty complete. Manual and disc. Next we have uh, Deluxe Paint 3. Deluxe Paint was the art program on the Amiga that everybody loved a lot, so it's not too bad. A bit of tape on the back, and the front for that matter. It has its manual, nice thick manual, and the three discs. So all very good. So program disc, art disc, and animation disc. So that's what the discs are split into. And there's a little quick reference key guide as well. So, you know, it's a really good productivity software. So that's actually the first bag finished. Let's see what's in bag number two. So next title is four. Not sure. But we have, it's a game by Psygnosis, and it's Spellbound. And actually on the back, screenshots from the Atari ST. So. Inside it has screen manual, registration card, and it is indeed an Atari ST game. So that's really good. I don't have a lot of um, Atari ST games, especially ones that work or that I still have the disc for. And this is, you know, looks like quite a colourful game. So I'm just getting the box in order. So there we go, Psychos. I'll just show you back there. It looks quite colourful. It'd be very interesting to see what that's like. Now next we have Mega Phoenix for the Amiga. And the box is upside down. So it's an enhanced Phoenix. And um, it has the disc. Interesting inlay card. With a coffee stain on one side. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, Tiger Road by Capcom. And on the end, it's for the Atari ST. of the port status of this but anyway we have a little passport to Capcom it's like a, a um, competition thing there's the rest of the competition details 
So these look relatively, I mean they've got a lot of the loose stuff in the boxes so they look relatively untouched. And we have two discs. as part of the software negotiation ones, this one um, actually goes cover even if, if I sold this one, not that I would because I don't have it, because um, it's mint in box and everything like that, this would cover half of what I paid for all of the software part of this by the way. So we have Frogger cartridge for the Commodore VIC-20. Now I haven't taken my VIC-20 apart yet to try and fix it, so I won't be able to demo this one at this stage. But we have the manual and the enormous VIC-20 cartridge. The label looks in relatively good condition, considering the age. Back in the right way. So there we go, my first box VIC-20 game. And um, I will, you know, make best endeavours to try and get the VIC-20 up and going again. Now we actually have... Okay, so that's... Oh, that's got some manuals come out of things. Carnegie Grand Prix was from earlier. And Bush Buck Quick manual there. So then next we have... I actually got this... I have this game for another system. I think the Atari ST, but here is The Hunt for Red October but it's for the Commodore 64. And it says disc. Screenshots, but they could be from a, a different system. Right, and we have, it's a big tape. Tape. Right, sorry about that. Right, next. Uh, this video is already probably long enough. Okay, now next we have, I do not know which system for, so, but it is, North and South. Oh no, there it is up there. Mega. 500, 1000 and 2000. And that looks quite an interesting looking little game. Instructions in English. Very dirty. So we have the disc. And the manual. Yes, it is definitely in English there. And there's something else in the bottom of the box as well. No, it's just a spacer, so. North and South of the Amiga, so the Amiga's definitely winning in the number of game stakes here. And, ooh, okay, this isn't bad. So we have a, um, a collation here, Giants for the Amiga. And it includes, let me get rid of the thing. There we go. We have Outrun, Gauntlet 2, 1943, and Street Fighter. What a fantastic collection of games. Especially since that, you know, it's another, I didn't actually realise Gauntlet 2 came out for the Omega as well. And 1943, I mean, it's in the series of games I love. Outrun's a fantastic game on those systems. We'll have to see what the Omega version's like. And Street Fighter. So, hope the games are in here. No, is it this missing? Damn it. <laughs> okay, so we have Disc 3, Gauntlet 2, and we have Street Fighter, but we're missing Disc 1 and 2. We have the instructions. Um, I think we've got the instructions for something else. Keep the thief, whatever that is. Old rats! I was getting so excited by her. So, what did we miss out on? 1943 and Outrun. Damn. Oh, um, and, we have another game, and it's for the IBM as well. Okay. Balance of Power. Looks like a nuclear war type game. Quite old by the looks of it. 
goes back. It's got Macintosh graphics. Now runs in color with EGA cards. This is how far we're going back here. Microsoft Windows runtime system included. Nothing else required. So this is a DOS game with the Microsoft Windows runtime. So you're talking uh, Windows 2. Oh my goodness. So yeah, IBM PCXT and True Compatibles. 512K CGA EGA or Hercules Monochrome card. Oh my goodness. So in here we have the original Mindscape balance power folder here. Yeah, and the, the discs are in there. And and the manual in the book. Wow. Have to be one of the pieces oldest pieces of software I've got, I reckon. I mean, for the IBM PC. So we've got 1985. There we go. All right. All right, a little disappointing on the Giants collection there, but um, although saying that, I mean, I have, you know, three or four double boxes of discs for the Amiga, and I haven't been through all of them yet, so you never know, I might be able to find 1943 and outrun in that lot. But um, unfortunately, yeah, we're not going to be able to demo at this moment. So I'll put together some demos. Um, I'll add some to the end of this video, but I will also do another video just with play demos from this because this video is already probably far too long. Alright, thank you for watching and putting up with, with this um, long video so far and I'll catch you all later. Here we go with the Tiger Road. Second attempt. <coughs> First attempt was instructed by the battery going in the camera. Well that's okay. Well, I'm going to figure out what the world is supposed to be doing. It's not that complicated. We go along and hit. Now, as I was saying last time through, um, I'd say the graphics are a little disappointing. Um, they did this thing on the Spectrum version and also the MSX version where they did the reduced th screen thing for performance. It wasn't really necessary on this, they could have made the characters larger, a little bit more distinctive. I suppose at the very least, at least they're colourful. I'm just trying to see. There we go, got that. So you can change levels by. Pushing up, as you jump, and you can jump back down again. So I think I've upgraded my weapon now. You have to be really careful how close you get to that guy, or you can lose a lot of, a lot of health. Okay, I hadn't run out of health, but I seem to have died. Not... Oh, I have to start at the beginning. Oh, I see. We have a limited time. Well, now I know that. So, we our way through these guys. I'm going to ignore the big guy at the top this time. It takes far too much time to get him. Got under 40 seconds to go now. Okay, now we the door. There we go, there's an like a boss. And he picks me up and throws me. That was nice of him. Not good. Okay, so. 
we can explore in a bit of a building here whilst avoiding the big guys who seem pretty hard to kill it's got splattered by another one of them Ooh, please don't hurt me I'm stuck I'm dead. Uh, so we've obviously got to try and make our way through um, this part without getting beaten up by the giants. Woo! It's good we can do these super leaps. Come alive, just uh, that wasn't useful. I seem to have lost the ability to jump down. Is that me dead again? Yep. So this is an example of how not to play Tiger Road. Oh, go down the stairs, you stupid... This one over here now. No, I didn't want to go up the stairs. Okay. Nope, that tactic didn't work. And we're dead again. Okay, that's enough punishment and torture for one day. But anyway, an interesting little game. They probably could have done better with the visuals, but it's not that bad. But here we go with um, Amiga Phoenix on the Amiga. You go down the startup screen, the good Amiga music. Let's dive straight into it. pretty fast. Interesting how my ship's so big. Well, oh, that doesn't leave a lot of room though. Tricky. Yeah. Last life, I think. Not sure about collision detection. So it seems like I have somewhat scoring things to regular things get through a level so we can Again. 
Oh, he one of them. Oh, the straight down diving ones get me every time. to try and to you've got to hit them dead in the centre and I'm dead again goodness me I have to at least try and get off the first level oh shield that's right you've got a shield Shield slowly charges. Right, we're down to two at least. Stuck in an edge of screen diving pattern now. <sighs> Obviously, you can't hit them in their wings. Yay! Fire. Wave two. Can we do we get to fire faster like in the real things? At least I've shown you the second level. Mega Phoenix on the Amiga. So, not too bad. And, uh, so that's a fully boxed copy going in the collection. Here we go, we've got two. sound which is probably disappointing for Amiga fans out there okay a little bit more loading of the different character types. As I said, there's got a two, not got one. Okay. Okay, we seem to be just controlling that one. I'll play the elf for a little while. Warrior, wizard, elf. Change joystick select to character. Using their start button, what I would have thought the start button was. Okay, can't seem to start the game. Welcome, Red Warrior. I have 
sorry. Required pressing to function, please. That was uh, probably what it was written on the screen and I just wasn't noticing it. Well, this looks identical to the Atari ST version. demonstration. Let's see if I can go up to level 6. straight to level 6 because we might be able to see the death character and show you a bit more variety in a quick session. Okay. So you can get a, um, it says you can get a special 4 player adapter that hooks up to the parallel port. Visibility ran out. I haven't got a potion, so I'm in trouble with it. Death here. You can kill death, as you can see. I lost a lot of health. There is Gauntlet 2 on the Amiga, and here I was thinking Gar the Garrison series was the only, were the only ones um, on the Amiga. And you can get the proper game. Gauntlet was, 2 was converted to a lot of... that because I could play this for a while and I don't seem to be running down health. All right, let's move on.